Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jack here from Jacktastic Tech, and today we're going to be doing a little bit of an experiment in Premiere Pro to compare performance between Adobe's new H.265 codec. Well, they didn't make it, but they implemented it into Premiere Pro CC 2017, so we're going to see how that performs against H.264. <laughs> Also, I just got back from climbing a mountain up in New Hampshire, and I cooked spaghetti and meatballs at the top, so if you guys want to see more interesting stuff like that, make sure to follow my social media links, which are either Jacktastic Tech or Jacktastic Mofo. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to open up a previous uh, project, a video from here. So I've gone ahead and I've opened up a new project in... Uh, so I've gone ahead and I've opened up an old project in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017. This is the uh, $50 AMD PC video. Um, certain items are missing, which shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and first render this using H.264 and then H.265. Uh, we're going to look at the average CPU usage as well as GPU usage, um, which I don't think Premiere Pro is going to really show much of. And then we're going to go ahead and look at the time it takes to render, and we'll take our data from that. So let's go ahead and render this out. I'm just going to bring up Task Manager um, and MSI Afterburner to measure the CPU and GPU utilization. All right, and so GPU usage is right here. We have our CPU usage right there. We're going to go ahead We're going to export this as a H.264 file. Um, okay. So first we'll go ahead and set it to H.264. Um, we're going to use my typical default settings of a constant bit rate of 12. Uh, and then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to export this to the desktop. Um, before I do this, I actually have to make sure I unmute, unmute these tracks because I don't know what difference that could make in the um, actual uh, performance. So all the settings are all the same. Make sure that's on the desktop. Uh, 346 megabytes. Now let's see how long it takes to render. Uh, this is only 4 minutes and 41 seconds, so it shouldn't be too, too long. So move that there. And we'll wait to see CPU utilization as well as GPU utilization. All right, and so now it is all done recording uh, or rendering, and we saw a max CPU usage realistically of somewhere in the 60s. Uh, it had little spikes for like a millisecond. Uh, CPU utilization, we reached a pretty solid 72%, I saw. Um, that was pretty consistent, but you can see the bottom eight threads were used virtually half where the... Um, top 16 threads that is was used about 90 percent so let's go ahead and let's render this as a h265 file and then we're going to go ahead and see um, how the performance difference is so h265 same constant bit rate of 12 uh, the reason why i use 12 and not something like 13 or 20 is mainly because uh, YouTube compresses things as it is, and so the difference in 12 or 20 isn't going to be huge, but the file size on your drive is going to be different. And already we can see this is a higher file size using H.265. Uh, so we can go ahead and export. Let's bring these open. So this already looks like it's going to take a little bit longer, but this keeps dropping down. Uh, we're going to see after how long exactly it took. So already we're at um, over 90% CPU utilization. All right, and so now the video using the H.265 is all done encoding. I'm going to go ahead, 
look at the numbers and then I'll get back to you guys in a minute with the results. So after going back, rewatching those two little recordings, uh, I was able to pull out all the information from them and here's what I got. So H264 took 100 seconds to render, which is pretty good, that's a minute and 40 seconds, versus H265, which took 2 minutes and 50 seconds, or 170 seconds. That's a 70% uh, increase in render time. So going from H264 to H265 would cause your render time to almost increase by 2. Um, it was also a larger file size by 13%. H.264 uh, was only 364 megabytes for this um, four and a half minute long clip where the H.265 was 413 megabytes. Uh, so, you know, if you're saving these videos and not deleting them after you upload them to like YouTube, then you're gonna wanna go with H.264 because 13% over 10 videos is a whole nother video if they're all the same length, of course. Um, it also used 20% uh, more CPU usage, which can be viewed as a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but it's kind of a bad thing when it, when it takes longer to render and is also a larger file size. The final thing to do uh, is to just compare video quality. Uh, and so I'm going to bring it up in VLC. I'm going to take a snapshot and then we're going to compare two of the same frames. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and so now I have the two images. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to a point of sharpness. Um, this wasn't the best film video. My focus was a little bit off. Right now I'm looking at H.264, and there doesn't seem to be really any, like, insane artifacting. Um... So let's go ahead, let's check out the other video. There does seem to be a slight color difference. I don't know if that uh, has really anything to do with anything. Um, the H.265 is just a little bit darker and more saturated. Um, but it could have a number of reasons behind it. Um, like I said, there doesn't seem to be much artifacting. The compression looks to be about identical um so yeah what does all this mean it means maybe don't use h265 just yet uh there doesn't seem to be really any large um improvements i mean we tested with 32 processing threads and as you guys can see uh even when it used more cpu utilization it didn't render faster and i think that goes to the gpu utilization um, H.264 uh, used significantly more GPU than H.265, and it also used it uh, more sporadically, where H.265 used it in less, but in just a bit more sustained um, amount of time. So yeah, H.264 still seems to be on top, and uh, if there was any quality difference, it probably wouldn't matter unless you were using it to give directly to play on a player or uh, on Vimeo or something like that. Um, but I can't see really any difference, so H.264 is still on top. Still recommend using it. Um, that's all for this video. If you guys liked it, drop a like down below. If you didn't like it, drop a dislike. And if you really enjoyed it, let me know why in a comment down below, and let me know what you'd like to see in a future video. Until next time, peace out.